Today on Stupid Fast RC, we're looking at how to tune a carburetor on a 5B, notice I didn't say Baja or Baja, and whether or not you should fit a paper filter. And also, a little hack that you won't find anywhere on how to keep your clutch spring in your car. Let's do it. Hi, I'm Jason from Sick Hobbies. I'm here to explain the tuning of your carbies on a bar jar. All right, so for your tuning on the carby, the closest needle to your engine block will be your low end needle. Where you want to be on your low end needle is one and a quarter turns out. So from full in, you want to be one and a quarter turns out. That is a general starting point for your tuning. On your top end, which is the furthest away from the block, you want to be at least one and a half out for a general tuning. Um, some engines will require a bit more, some engines might take a bit less, but at your one and a half, that is your general sort of starting point for your tuning. Um, if you're not sure on any of the tuning methods, take it to your local hobby shop. I'm sure the people there will help you out to no end. For your running, you're gonna to wanna to run it in rich. rich. So you'll end up, say, turning your high end out to about your two, two turns out. Your low end, you're gonna use it about one and a half, maybe to one and three quarters. That'll be your bed-in procedure or what we call a run-in procedure and all that's doing is bedding your piston into your head and bedding the, the bearings on your conrod onto your, and your cranking. Um, now for different carbies, obviously there's four or five different carbies. Um, each tuning will be different. So some carbies might go further out on your high end and a bit tighter on your bottom end. If you've got the tuned pipe on it, um, you can lean them out just a tad but if the motor starts pinging, you want to richen it up just a, a little bit, say three quarters of a turn, um, maybe even less. Um, sometimes um, the carby you might have, whether it be a 990 or the 886 Walbro carbies, um, obviously the tuning's going to be a whole lot different again um, due to their pumps and whatnot in them. Um, and your pipes, so mid-range pipes to your top end pipes to the big side pipe all your, all your tuning is going to be different um, if you've got the top end pipe off obviously you want to be running a bit richer in your top end which is this needle in here um, if it starts to ping obviously richen up by and when we richen it up we only use small increments so warm the motor up Give it a run up and down the street or up and down the paddock. Um, if it sounds like it's pinging or it's starving for fuel, use it. Use the needle as a clock. So one hour would be that much of a turn. So tuning, you don't want to be tuning the car or tuning your needles by a whole turn like that. You'll only be tuning them by one hour increments. And that is as small adjustment as that. That is what we call an hour or use your needle as a clock face so there'd be 12 o'clock there that'd be one o'clock that'd be two o'clock three o'clock would be around a bit further or halfway around around the clock face um, never try and turn it a full turn or a half turn and make sure when you're tuning your car has always been warmed up properly first um, it's the same principle as running a nitro your bottom end one hour increment so all it is is just a small turn once the engine's warmed up um, and never go full in and then wind it out and forget how many turns you've come out half a turn one turn one and a half turns so to take it back out it's just your half turn a full turn a turn and three quarters roughly that should bring you to a nice bottom end tune same with the top you never actually tune it like that it's always by a one hour increment so because this car has been tuned beforehand it would be just if you wanted to run a bit quicker or a bit harder one hour on increment to there once the car's warmed up give it a run if it's not blowing a continuous stream of smoke and the smoke doesn't have to be thick it's just got to be a light smoke 
bring the car back because you will start to be heating the engine right up. Just one hour back on your tune. Um, give it another run, see how it's running. You'll always be, if you're always playing with your carby, um, there could be other issues with your motor. You never and always oil your inner sock on your, on your air filter. Um, that stops you from dusting out a motor or sucking dust through your carby and hurting the inner piston. <clears throat> that's about it. That's all of, that's about all you can tune on them. Uh, all right, so the starting procedure to your bar jar is prime your, well, first we'll turn our remote control on because that's a great help. Then turn your car on. So you know you're always in the neutral position. Prime the bulb on the top of the carburetor until you see the return line start to get fuel into it. Push your choke down. One. Two. Three pulls with your choke on. Turn your choke off. Your pull starts starting to go. Okay, so we're just leaping ahead a bit here um, from the point where we left off uh, trying to start the car where there were two small problems. Um, one with the pull start. In the pull start there, um, these little paws um, are worn out so they'll have to be replaced. I actually, in this case, bought a whole new pull start but I'm going to actually replace these paws and use this as a spare for later on because the rest of the mechanism is fine. The other thing that we noticed as well was that it wouldn't idle um, and it wasn't because it was maladjusted the, once we got past the uh, starting problem but what we found was is that the wheels were wanting to turn all the time even though it was up on a block and if you stop them the engine stopped. Now this problem came about because of the clutch. Now the clutch had to be disassembled which was quite a task in itself and uh, I'll move the camera in so you can have a look at that. Now this is no small job, as you can see here. Um, taking this apart, you've got to be committed and there needs to be a problem. The problem in this case was that this spring had become dislodged um, and was allowing the clutch to be semi-engaged all the time and crawling the car forward even though it was at idle. So we couldn't actually tune the car properly. So in order to get the thing going, we had to ta I had to take it apart and what I've done here is I've actually put two small wires into the clutch to hold this spring in place. Now I don't know if that's a uh, recognized fix for this um, or whether I should have just got another spring but I'm pretty sure that's going to hold the spring in place. The second big problem that I had was getting these screws out. Now one of the problems I had was there's a screw here in the bottom of the clutch housing that just wouldn't come out. Now I've got some specialized tools um, that help in a situation like this. The first tool I've got is a socket with a hex allen key fitting attached to it. Generally really good for getting these sorts of uh, stubborn bolts out but in this case all I did was strip out the top of the bolt. Now that leaves you with a problem because then how do you get it out? Now, this was after I'd even heated it up. I heated it up with a paint stripping gun. Now you've got to be very careful when you do that because you don't want to heat up the surrounding area, burn any plastic. Um, if you've got a temperature um, gauge that you use with your nitros, you can make sure that things aren't heating up too much. This is a, that's a pretty precise operation. I managed to get one of the bolts out use, heating things up, but the second one, as I say, stripped out. Now, the fix to that is, and you got to be absolute, this is last desperation stakes, is to get one of these and cut a line in the top of the head. Now, once you've done that, you may be able to just get out with a screwdriver. In this case, I used an impact driver. So, I mean, these are not necessarily tools that you're going to have. An impact driver works by, you actually put it into the car and smash it with a hammer. Each time you smash it with a hammer, you get a rotation of one or two millimeters. And uh, you've got to be careful because if you shatter the engine, um, the casing of the engine, then you're in for a, a fairly bad time. But it, once you've got to this point and you do have to get the clutch apart, you're kind of at, at, at the end of the road anyway. So, you know, these desperate measures are sort of the last ditch attempts to get your car going. So, um, 
luckily for me I did manage I did some damage to the actual housing and you can see the cut through it there but um, that's still going to work and uh, I've managed to get that bolt out I'll just get another bolt and I'll be able to reassemble this and um, uh, it'll be good for another day so yeah just uh, a couple of little tips there that you may or may not want to use um, but if you get stuck that's the way to go. So I'm going to reassemble this now. I'm going to finish the tuning process and I've got one other thing that I'm going to do and that is I'm going to put a paper filter on this. The paper filter filters to a lower micron level than the oil filter. Obviously I don't have to oil it. Um, by putting an outer wears cover on it I can get some of the bigger stuff to actually not even enter the filter which you could do with your, with your uh, sponge filter anyway so that's neither here nor there. The other thing that apparently is that on a high intake motor the foam filter tends to crush in and restrict the inflow of air to the motor. Now that means that you're going to um, change the fuel air mixture at the top end which you don't necessarily want to do it's going to be running too rich you're not going to achieve full power out of your top end the paper filter isn't going to crush when it uh, when the vacuum increases and you're actually going to actually uh, get some better top end out of your engine so I'm going to fit that as well finish my tuning process and uh, let's see how it all looks now fast forward through to part way through the reassembly and I'll reinforce a couple of little points with you always have a tray that you put your nuts and bolts in specifically from this job um, don't look too closely there might be a couple of nuts and bolts that are not from this job and this is good because it's magnetic um, it's stuck to a vise in this case I can't easily tip this over it can be tipped over of course but also anything that's metal like not aluminium will in fact stick in there and it just avoids you losing things and it's a really good way to keep tabs of what you've taken apart so that if you see stray nuts and bolts you know that you haven't assembled it correctly and the other thing is that everyone these days has a mobile phone take photos of it as it comes apart so that you remember how to put it back together these I think are two of the best tips that you can have for assembling and disassembling these sorts of things now if you haven't done this before there's a pin that comes out of here to take this front cover off and here you just need to get a screwdriver into here to clip this off and out. Oh, there you go. That's completely out. That's gone.com. So that's the first part out. Um, pull that out. And then in here. Now this is in fact going to remove the entire carburetor. But we've actually got four bolts that go back to hold the filter together and we were also going to bolt this plate back where this plate comes out so that's all going to make sense in a minute okay first one out the trick is here not to lose the gaskets so just assemble the cage around the filter like so a uh, bit of grease there ready to slide it on now these bolts that hold the carburetor and the bracket together you are going to have to remove all the washers off there otherwise the bolt is not going to recess into here properly and sit flat so that the air cleaner can sit flush in this spot here it'll be raised slightly that bolt head needs to here here it is here this bolt head needs to disappear completely into this bracket so that air cleaner can sit flush the only way that can happen is by removing both of the washers probably not the best engineering practice ever because now we don't have a spring washer in there but that's what happens when we mod stuff right it isn't always best best practice but um, we will have a mod here so we're going to sacrifice something here um, hopefully this bolt won't come undone you may want to put some Loctite on there um, entirely up to you okay so I'm going to quickly test whether or not that works and there it is it's beautiful sits flush I mean it's such a good fit it'll just sit there on its own a little bit of grease on the end of it so I'm now going to go ahead and put this um, second cage over the top or the cage over the top um, being as careful as I can to do that once again you could have put some Loctite in there now to finish off this job I'm actually going to put this bag over the top which is going to stop some of the um, larger bits of dirt getting into that filter 
Um, this should give us much better airflow into the carburetor and we're almost ready to try and finish the tune. Okay, there it is. Um, bag over the top, ready to go. Let's give it another crack. Got proper throttle operation. And let's see if we've managed to make a difference. Too far. Okay, so it's just back on with the covers and job done. Now this is uh, completely irrelevant, but if you're anything like me and you just like to rev stuff up for the fun of it, have a go at this. This is an X01 with uh, the ESC completely unlocked and uh, the setup to do 100 miles an hour. Okay, are we ready? And there you go. Okay, if you've come this far, don't forget to subscribe and like. Thanks for watching Stupid Fast RC.